Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to be talking about commissions. But before we do, I have a bunch of contest updates to share with you, so I'm going to ramble about that for a few minutes first. If that doesn't interest you, feel free to skip to the timestamp on screen to get straight to the video topic, although I would encourage you not to if you're a fan of free stuff and cool art. So first of all, thank you so much to everyone who participated in April's monthly art contest. Given that it was my first one and I've never hosted a contest before, I was a little worried that no one would submit anything, but as it turns out, you guys are the best and I shouldn't have worried. I was honestly overwhelmed to see how incredible the art everyone submitted was, like damn! I'm glad I decided to go with voting as the method of picking a winner because I sure as hell wouldn't have been able to pick one on my own. And based on those votes, the first place winner of April's spring-themed art contest is Munchbud Inc. with this gorgeous art deco piece, and the second place winner is Amelia with this breathtaking and colorful submission. Congratulations to both of you, and thank you so much for submitting your beautiful work. Their social media is all linked on screen and in the description, so go check out their other work as well. Thank you so much to everyone who participated. It was so exciting to refresh the contest page and see more and more fantastic art pop up. And I'll show the rest of the entries on screen here so that you can all see them too, because once again, damn. Anyway, now that it's May, it's time for the next one, and May's art contest theme will be night. As for prizes, Gaumon has provided their M1220 drawing tablet as a first first place prize. And because I'm not big on endorsing or offering products I haven't used, I naturally gave it a try first. And after doing so, I gotta say, I'm actually pretty sad that I have to give it away. It works perfectly and is exceptionally easy to set up and use. But what I was particularly impressed by, and I'm now going to very much miss, is the tablet's versatility. It has eight express keys that you can program to suit your needs, and if you know me and my use of tablets, you know that the first two were instantly programmed to undo and redo, and then used in rapid succession for hours on end. But what's more impressive and exciting is that this glorious ass tablet has multimedia keys. That's right, the tablet itself lets you skip songs, adjust your computer's volume, switch programs, take a screenshot, and more directly by using those buttons. The amount of time I saved by not having to manually switch tabs to change my music or alternate between my browser and paint tool sigh and struggle with my laptop's weird ass volume buttons is surprisingly high. And I know, because I kept a tally of the times I did all those things. It's so so convenient. And don't even get me started on the fact that taking screenshots that easily is a godsend for references. And the convenience doesn't end there, because even the pen is more convenient than other tablet pens I've used. You can switch between the pen tool and the eraser tool with the button on the pen, which is unbelievably handy, and yet another feature that saves a ridiculous amount of time in ridiculously tiny increments. And the cherry on top of this beautiful tablet Sunday is that it connects to most Android devices, which is the cruelest irony to me, because like five years ago, I bought an Android tablet that I wanted to draw on, but gave up on using it for that because I could neither find nor afford a stylus compatible with it and was just using my finger. Now, with the M1220, I can use that tablet for art, only after five years and the purchase of an iPad, because I can connect them. And the M1220 is lightweight as hell, so it's easy to bring around with me to use wherever I go. It's honestly, it's amazing. It's amazing enough that going back to the vastly less convenient world of other tablets without these features is gonna be a legitimate struggle for me. I got attached, I named it Gerald. But at least one of you guys will be giving it a great new home by entering May's contest, so I can take solace in that. Please submit your entries based on the theme of night at duchesscelestiacontests.card.com, linked in the description, so that one of you can love Gerald like I do. The winner, its new parent, will once again be decided by public vote on that same site, and will be announced in the first video of June. Big thank you to Gaumon for giving me the opportunity to both try out the M1220 and then give one of you that same opportunity, because honestly, it's a damn good tablet. Alright, thank you for your patience unless you skip to this timestamp, in which case I will remember this betrayal. So, commissions, you're doing them wrong. At least that's what everyone says, because everyone has an opinion on this, and everyone's opinion is the right one. You don't even have to be an artist to have an opinion on this, because random strangers with no art experience at all will not hesitate to tell you that you're charging too much or too little for them, just as often as other artists will. The topic of commissions, and subsequently what people charge for them, is weirdly polarizing both within the art community and out of it. So, naturally, I'm gonna talk about it. More specifically, I'll be going over the two most common perspectives on commission pricing, my perspective on commission pricing, and then some general advice for taking commissions altogether, which will ideally be applicable to beginners, experts, and everyone in between. Or completely useless and irrelevant. Hard to say, we'll find out. So let's start with the controversy surrounding commission pricing, which largely boils down to two main opposing opinions on it and why people have them. Both sides have a lot of good points, and both are, for the most part, acting in good faith and just wanting the best for themselves and other artists. It's just the aggression and refusal to to acknowledge the validity of 
the other side's points that causes problems, because it polarizes the art community by making commissions into an unnecessarily problematic and dividing issue. Anyway, the first group of people criticizes artists who charge too little for their commissions, usually for two primary reasons, because it devalues the artist's work and doesn't allow them to make a living wage, and because it negatively impacts other artists who are trying to charge higher rates for their work by making it harder to compete with low-balling undercharging rate. People on this side of the commission debate argue that if tons of artists everywhere price their commissions too low, it doesn't just hurt those artists. It also hurts artists who are trying to charge fairly for their own work. And quite frankly, that's true. If five artists are offering the same kinds of commissions with the same quality, and four of them are charging half of what they quote-unquote should be, then even if the fifth artist is charging a reasonable amount that all five could realistically be charging, that fifth artist's prices, despite being fair, are gonna be seen as ridiculous, expensive, and not worth it by comparison. Charging 25 bucks for a piece that's worth 100 doesn't just mean you're losing 75 bucks. It means you're teaching the art market of consumers that that piece and all pieces like it are only worth 25 bucks. And that hurts everyone trying to charge 100. That's a completely valid thing to be upset and concerned about, as is the fact that this pattern of undercharging can be damaging to an artist's self-esteem and motivation, and frequently leads them to burning out or working themselves to death. But that's only one side, and the other one is, frustratingly, just as valid. So let's get into that next. The other main group of people believes that while they would like to charge a livable, reasonable wage for their work, it's unlikely that without a substantial enough following, they'll actually be able to get any commissions if they do. Most of them acknowledge that undercharging does negatively impact the art market and lead to consumers being less willing to pay for art. But for small artists struggling to get any commissions at any price, they don't always have the luxury of being able to care about that. And I don't mean they're being deliberately selfish or careless by intentionally undercharging for their work while knowing that. I mean that without a significant following or a great deal of experience, undercharging is often the only real way to compete with other artists in such an oversaturated market. And I don't think it's at all unfair for artists without big platforms to choose getting some commissions at very low rates over charging reasonably and getting none. It adds insult to injury when so many of the artists saying, charge more for your work asshole, have thousands of followers and a solid foundation of regular clients because sure, they're in a position to do that. The artists they're calling out for not charging enough might not be. So what's the right answer? Well, you all know me at this point and you all know I rarely have any right answers, just aggressive opinions that no one asked for, which is once again all I can offer you. And in this case, my opinion is that both sides are right in their views and both sides are wrong for thinking there's only one right way to price commissions. To me, the bottom line here is that whether you're of the belief that artists should charge minimum wage for commissions or the belief that artists are being reasonable by undercharging to compete with market saturation, you're valid either way with those beliefs, and the reasons and motivations behind them are more than fair. The problem doesn't lie with either side's arguments. The problem, in my eyes, begins when either side starts telling the other that they're pricing their commissions wrong based on those beliefs. Every artist has the right to charge what they personally prefer and feel comfortable with based on whatever they prioritize. And just because it's not what you would charge doesn't mean that you get to tell them they're objectively wrong, much less call them out for it. I recognize when it comes to undercharging having a negative impact on the art market, it's understandable that some people might blame the artists that undercharge for that impact. But I don't think it's fair to blame small artists just trying to make a living any way they can for the oversaturation in the market or the devaluation of art just because they're inadvertently worsening the problem. Because what the hell else are they supposed to do? They're not personally to blame for the fact that undercharging is such a problem. And if their only option is to bite the bullet and undercharge like everyone else, even if it means worsening that problem, I don't think it's right to say that they're in the wrong for that. I get encouraging them to charge more, and I get wanting to try to fix or at least lessen this problem, but blaming small artists for trying to make a living the only way they feel that they can isn't the answer. So I basically just said a lot of, there's no right or wrong way to price commissions, which is all well and good, but it doesn't really help any of you that are here for advice on pricing your commissions. And while I can't tell you what's best or what will work for you, I can at least give you some options and factors to consider when it comes to finding that answer for yourself. First of all, consider what's most important to you in terms of setting your prices. Low prices often mean more clients, but also, I don't want to say worse clients, but I kind of mean worse clients. Charging very little for your art attracts clients that are only willing to pay the minimum for what they want, which means they're a lot more likely to nickel and dime you, be less respectful, and value your work less. If that's not the 
the kind of customer you want to put up with, that's something you need to consider when you're setting your prices. You should also keep in mind what kind of message your prices are sending. Exceptionally low prices send the message of lower quality and less experience, which will also lead to lower expectations for your work. Particularly high prices send the message of professionalism and high-end quality, which will lead to higher expectations. Neither is right or wrong, but where your prices fall on that spectrum should correlate to the expectations you want your customers to have. Which is basically to say that you need to try to objectively evaluate your work based on its quality and your experience, and then decide what you're comfortable with. When I was 12, and taking deviant art points commissions, I had this guy basically say, well, this aspect could be better and I'd prefer this thing to be this way, but for 400 points I got what I paid for, so it's fine. And as a 12 year old whose art was mediocre at best, those were the exact expectations I wanted him to have based on my prices, because that was the best I objectively thought I could provide. I know how hard it is to see your art for what it is without self-doubt and insecurity making you biased, but it's something that gets easier with time, and pricing your work based on the standard of quality you believe you can reasonably provide, as well as what the client would expect you to provide based on your rates, is a helpful way to make sure that you're personally as comfortable as you can be with your own prices. Another important thing to consider is the amount of time and effort that each commission takes you. For example, I offer sketch commissions, line art commissions, and fully rendered commissions. In terms of the time each type takes me, sketch and line art commissions take me significantly less time than fully rendered commissions, so they're priced quite closely to each other, while fully rendered pieces have a bit of a price hike comparatively. Backgrounds also take me a while so I include a significant additional charge for clients who want them. If something takes you a long time, charge more for it. You should also consider charging extra for rush jobs with tight deadlines that will require more of your time and prioritization. Conversely, if you're really fast at something else, charge less for it so that you can get more of those commissions and churn them out quickly based on that skill. For example, my chibi commissions are much cheaper than my normal commissions because they're simpler and I can get them done way faster. I've also known many artists who choose to charge less for commissions with subject matter that they particularly enjoy so that they can encourage encourage people to give them more commissions that they have fun making. Chibis, cute girls, animals, portraits. If there's something you really like drawing, you could always consider slightly discounting commissions of that thing to get more of them. General considerations aside, what I usually recommend in terms of determining your rates is a combination of competitive pricing and hourly pricing. To be clear, I don't mean you should actually charge an hourly rate. I mean, you certainly can if you want to, but I haven't personally seen that work out super well for people, and I've heard from the vast majority of customers that they strongly prefer fixed rates to hourly rates. What I mean when I say hourly pricing is to base your fixed prices on the amount of time you spend on average on each type of commission. I know I just explained why charging minimum wage based on that isn't always feasible, but it's still worth considering when you're establishing your prices, hence why I recommend a combination. In my experience, it's best to figure out what minimum wage would be for each type of commission you offer, and then do some research into what other artists close to your skill level are charging for those types of commissions. Then I lower the minimum wage fixed price to something closer to what they're charging, so that I can price competitively while also keeping in mind the bottom line of here's what each commission is actually worth versus here's the lowest I'm willing to charge for it. That's just what I do though, and whether you feel comfortable lowering your prices like that or not is completely your call. Additionally, industry-wise, artists are also known to increase their rates based on the number of years worth of experience they have in their line of work. And as your own boss, it does make sense to give yourself a raise as your career progresses in accordance with your art's improvement and your professional growth. Ultimately, I guess my biggest advice when it comes to pricing commissions is to experiment. Let trial and error teach you what works best for your personal needs and comfort, because everyone will have a different, unique experience with commissions and pricing. And at the end of the day, the only thing I can say that I genuinely believe will apply to every artist is that no matter what, if you're exhausted at the end of every commission and constantly feeling like they're too much work and not worth it, you should probably reconsider what you're charging for them. Beyond that, don't let anyone tell you what to charge, because only you know what's gonna work for you. Alright, so let's end this off with some general commission advice, as I mentioned. First, I would strongly recommend writing up a contract for your commissions. I know it can feel like overkill to have someone sign a commission contract for like a sketch doodle they're paying 15 bucks for, but protecting your intellectual rights as well as enforcing your terms of service is always worthwhile. Most customers won't try to screw you over, but some will. So the clearer and more airtight the contract you write is, the harder it is for them to do so. Personally, I have one general contract template that I alter to fit each general commission, and then I have one commercial contract template that I alter to fit each commercial commission. You don't have to write a new contract every time you get a new commission, you just insert the necessary information about each client and their commission into the same one every time. In terms of what that contract should include, that's entirely
entirely up to you. But basically try to cover your ass in every foreseeable way and make sure your client knows what to expect from working with you by reading it. For example, my contracts include how long the commission will take, when updates will be sent to the client for approval, how long the client has to give that approval before I continue, how and when payment will be received, refund policies, kill fees, additional charges for revisions, retention of intellectual rights and artist credit, commercial rights or lack thereof, and a zero tolerance policy for NFTs. There are quite a few contract generators online that let you alter them to suit your needs, and I would really, really encourage you to look into them if you haven't already. Another important piece of advice for commissions is to know your own limits. I completely understand the urge to take on more commissions than you feel like you can maybe handle, whether it be because you need the money or because you don't want to disappoint clients or turn people down and lose business. But nothing will burn you out faster than taking on too many commissions or too complex of commissions or types of commissions you're not comfortable or experienced with. It's good to push yourself and grow, but if you push yourself too hard or too fast, it's not going to do you any favors. Best case scenario, you exhaust yourself by burning the candle at both ends. Worst case scenario, you rush your work and sacrifice quality in doing so, or you procrastinate and take too long, leaving your clients waiting longer and longer with increasingly less professionalism. A lot of people only accept a certain number of commission slots at any given time, and others have commission waiting lists so that interested clients can express that interest without demanding any commitment from the artist that might overwhelm them in the way that instantly accepting that commission could. Waiting lists and limited slots also have the added marketing benefit of increasing demand for your commissions, which is never a bad thing either. Similarly, if you do end up feeling overwhelmed by the commissions that you've taken on, I personally believe that the worst thing you can do is hide that from your clients. If you're too burnt out, exhausted, or busy to get a commission done within the expected timeline, it doesn't help you or them to just avoid them and not keep them updated on it. Leaving them in the dark isn't just unprofessional, it gradually deteriorates the trust between you and your client, and it might lead to them either not ordering work from you again or requesting a refund for the work they've already ordered and not received. In my opinion, the best thing you can do when you're struggling to get a commission done is to just be open and honest with the client about it. Keep them updated on what you're dealing with and how long their commission will be delayed as a result, and it will always turn out better than if you just ghost them until the commission is either eventually finished late or they lose patience. And honestly, clear communication is a tip in and of itself. Always make sure your client knows what to expect from working with you, as I mentioned before, in relation to your contract. Make sure they know when to expect updates, what types of updates to expect, what reference you need, how long it'll take, when you need to be paid, if there are unforeseen problems, etc. I mean, think about it from their perspective. They're trusting you with their money to do what they paid you for, with no real way to hold you accountable for not doing it. And subsequently, they're probably going to prefer to hear from you as often and regularly as possible. Next, in terms of payment, you should definitely have a consistent and strictly enforced method of payment that takes both your comfort and your client's comfort into account. Personally, I charge 50% of the total commission price up front, and I don't start work on it until that's received. Then, when it's completed, I send the client a watermarked screenshot of the finished commission to prove that it's done and up to their standards, and then I charge the other half, and only send the high-res version without the watermark once that's paid. You obviously don't have to use that system, but it works for me, and figuring out your own that gives both you and your client the maximum financial protection is imperative. Finally, a couple other small things. You should always have plenty of examples for each type of commission that you offer offer on your portfolio or on whatever site or form that you take commissions on. For example, if you take a bunch of different types of commissions, like chibis, furries, mechas, sketches, line art, fully rendered. You should have examples readily available on whatever platform you're taking those commissions on for each type, clearly organized and separated. Also, if you're struggling to price your commissions, uh, try reaching out to others for advice. Other artists are usually happy to weigh in and help out, and if you have an established audience, you could always ask them for their input too. And lastly, if you're like me and you struggle with insecurity and constantly worry that your art isn't good enough or that your clients will be disappointed or hate it. Try to remind yourself that they commissioned you for a reason. They saw your art and liked it enough to want to pay for it. So don't let insecurity make you feel like they won't like it just because you don't necessarily like it yourself. All right, I've already talked about this for way too long, so I'll stop it there. But hopefully at least some of this was helpful. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about this, given that an audience of primarily artists is bound to have some passionate opinions about commissions. And I'm curious to hear your stances on it, so please feel free to share them in the comments. Thank you for watching. Special thank you as always to channel members Cafe Soleil, Joseph Solomon, Okonova, and Gabrielle Sexton, as well as patrons Lilybug, Kyle Lowe, Blue Swanson and This Is Totally My Name for their support. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to check out May's art contest for a chance to win a Gaumon M1220 drawing tablet, and I'll see you in my next one.